Hey guys, welcome back to Cultural Explorations. Today we will be starting a new knowledge bit series on design technology, IBDP design technology. Uh, the first topic which we are going to cover is about composite materials, which is part of topic 4, general materials. So, what is composite materials? Composite materials are a combination of two or more materials that are bonded together that create properties specifically designed for an intended application. Uh, they might improve the functionality, durability, or upgrade the characteristics of the material for a desired purpose. As designers, we should, when we develop new products, we should be aware of composite materials as they give the best properties of two materials. They have noted noticeably dissimilar chemical or physical properties because they are merged to create a new material with unlike properties unlike the individual elements the individual elements remain separate and you can distinguish them in the composites some engineered composites are reinforced concrete or masonry composites wood such as plywood uh, right now, aviation is the heavy leader in research about composite materials because for aviation, we need to find the right composites that can stand well to the heat, the stresses, uh, air resistance and the corrosion. Uh, there is also refined plastics such as fiberglass, polymers. There is also chemical uh, matrix composites, ceramic matrix composites, metal matrix composites and other advanced composite materials. Advanced composite materials are usually used for aviation because right now aviation is the main driver behind composite research. So why are composite materials used? Because they reduce the weight. Suppose in a plane, plane is heavy because it has to carry the fuel, the passengers, the equipment, other stuff. So that's therefore we need to use lighter materials to make the body of the fuselage so it is lighter. Uh, there is also a cost, cost effective. Uh, if we are ordering planes on a large scale, if we have more cost effective materials such as carbon fiber, which is also resistant to other chemicals and heat, it will be better for us than if we just put it off uh, straight aluminum or steel, it will be more expensive. Uh, also, it is scalable and it is sustainable for the environment. Right now, we are uh, the aviation is in the direction of lightweight, cost-effective, and sustainable. Uh, this is some positive and negative aspects of composites. Uh, they can take many forms. They can be mixed together. They can be welded together like a sandwich. They can also take the form of fiber sheets or particles. The, here are some positive effects of composites or pros and some negative effects. Uh, positive in effects include greater de durability, uh, more eco-friendly, uh, enhance some characteristics of the product like strength of accessibility. They also require less maintenance. Cons, however, they are very expensive because you need to obtain the raw materials of two separate products and then you have to have some skilled technician to put them together also. So that's why it's expensive to obtain the raw materials, but also the labor cost involved uh, making the material is also, as we said, as well as to assemble them together. Because to actually put them, you need the specialized machineries in some aspects. Uh, they also cannot be recycled easily because it is two different elements combined together. So therefore it cannot be recycled easily because it's difficult to separate them uh, some are not aesthetically pleasing uh, they can also be hard to repair or fix because they as i said they are two materials put together so it's hard to distinguish the materials and therefore it's hard to repair if one material goes uh, broken or gets damaged uh, example of this is laminated glass. If that goes, the plastic would hold the glass together. 
this is some applications of composites in aerospace, in business, uh, in automotive, in civil infrastructure, in construction, corrosive environments, electrical and marine. Uh, I will link this site below. Uh, uh, these are some examples of composites. One is very very famous is laminated glass. It is sticks together much more and it shatters less. There is also corrosion and chemical resistance composites. They are resistant to chemical and corrosion. They never rust. It is good for stuff like bridges or something which will come in contact with water and air. Bridges also need high tensile strength, a bit of flexibility, however not too much. It also needs to be strong to withstand its own weight and the weight of the people moving on top and the cars and everything passing by for uh, 30, 50 years, however the lifespan of the bridge is. Uh, we also need a greater durability because it's long time of high stress. Uh, that is why steel is often chosen for bridge materials. It is relatively inexpensive and fulfills the above criteria. Uh, another one is laminated glass. is basically two sheets of glass welded together with a resin or glue film in between. It is then heated and then pressed to bond them together. Concrete is a mixture of water, sand, gravel and cement. Uh, we have the mixing trucks in, used to pour out concrete. Uh, it is good for building roads and bridges. Uh, we will delve into concrete a bit later. Uh, another example is duct tape. Uh, this is an example of the layers in duct tape. As I said, uh, since it needs high uh, strength with other materials, adhesive strength with other materials, when it bonds together, that's why duct tape is one of the composites. As you can have different layers, you have the adhesive, you have the carrier, you have optional adhesive, and then you have the release liner, your stuff like that. Uh, they can also be water resistant, but not waterproof. Uh, you, duct tape is used for fixing or putting things together, sealing packs of tight boxes or packing holes. Uh, now, this is more composites, the different forms of composites. The process is used to make composites and some examples of composites such as concrete, engineering wood, plywood, uh, fiberglass, Kevlar, carbon reinforced plastics and LVL. Laminated veneer lumber. Lumber or basically wood. Laminated veneer wood. First, so what are the forms? How we can find the composites? It can either be fiber, sheets, particles or matrix. Fibers can be spun into threads, yarns, ropes or strings. Then they can be woven to create sheets of fabric. Uh, this example is carbon fiber, heavily used in the airplanes to make them lighter and more resistant to air pressure, stuff like that. It also uses resins and becomes very strong and light can improve structural integrity. That's why we use it in the airplanes. Uh, sheets, materials can be laminated or layered to create composite materials with unique properties. Particles can be added to a composite mix to provide unique properties. Particles is the concrete. You have different particles such as the sand, the water, the gravel, the cement. It all mixed together in the mixing truck and that's what produces the good concrete. Uh, it can also be a matrix. Matrix also means glue that binds the particles and the fibers together. It is typically liquid. Uh, very famous one is epoxy resin, usually used in the airline industry. It hardens and gives sticks to it. Uh, for complex shapes, carbon fiber can be quite challenging to manufacture. Uh, now, uh, these are some videos. Uh, I will link them below. Uh, this is a Concorde. Concorde was the fastest passenger jet uh, till date. Uh, however, now it has discontinued service because of several safety concerns because of how fast the flight was moving. Usually it used to use 
uh, move at Mach 1, Mach 2. So we can see a lot. Uh, usually planes nowadays have lots of composites. However, for the Concorde, there were a lot more composites and a lot more complex composites since it was uh, moving at such a higher speed and higher altitude. So it had to deal with much more pressures. It had to deal with the UV rays from the sun and it had to burn a lot of fuel because it was moving so fast. Uh, Mach 1, Mach 2. So Mach is breaking the sound barrier. So it basically broke the sound barrier. Uh, now these are, we talked about uh, the forms. Now we are going to talk about the processes. There are four processes, weaving, molding, postration and lamination. Now, weaving or filament winding. They are almost similar, but they are a bit different. Uh, filament winding is a process where a constant strand of material travels through some rotating cylinders. These are the rotating cylinders and it is covered in the resin, in the resin bath. So it moves from here, the material comes here, it goes into the resin and it is collected again. Uh, once it has given enough layers, then you take this out and you can use it for whatever purposes you are intending to use it for. Uh, these are some examples of product made from filament winding process. Uh, these uh, for filament winding, these are some advantages and these are some disadvantages. Uh, advantages of filament winding, high output, reproducibility. So that means you can reproduce it constantly. High stress parts, no fittings or fittings, no fittings involved. Uh, disadvantages, high capital cost, limited to symmetrical shapes. Uh, these are some videos, I will link them below. Uh, second process is molding. Molding is a process where two composite materials are put between two similar shape molds and they are pressed together. So the uh, force of them pressing bonds the composite to the material. Product, these are some products which are made from molding process. I will link that video below. Uh, hand layup. Hand layup process uh, usually for fiberglass. Uh, where more fabrics basically a layer of fabric is there you put a resin and then you put another layer of fabric so that's how it is but usually you do it with a hand you layer the fabrics with the hand each ply is separated with catalyzed the resin basically is worked into the fiber with the rollers so it really bonds together then it passes through a wet out station and that's how we do it. Uh, we can identify uh, products using that are made using hand layer process because they are vary in size, do not have a high accuracy finish because uh, it is by human so there is possibility of inaccuracy. Again, this is some advantages, low capital investment, small and large parts possible control thickness uh, because as I said it's the fiberglass then you have the resin then you have the fiberglass again and the resin again and you can keep going basically until you reach the thickness you want if it's just one layer then it's okay if it's like five layers then you keep going you can really control the amount of thickness that the final material has some disadvantages it's labor intensive. As I said, you have to, this one, you have to be more hands on with it. You have to, as you see with the roller over here, you have to push it down. So it gets compacted, the materials, the fiberglass and the resin. Uh, it is dependent on an operator. As I said, a physically person has to push it down. Uh, lamination is a process where two or more materials are welded together layer by layer with a bonding agent in between. Laminated glass is made up of layers of common glass put with special resin or bonding agents to keep them welded. This is also used in wooden floors that have layers of wood bonded together to improve the hardness and durability. That's the usually the aim of lamination to improve the hardness and, hardness and durability. Uh, here we can see 
some steps of lamination process i will link these videos below now pulsation a uh, pulsation uh, it is continuous as long as you have the store of the material over here this one is continuous is a continuous process for creating fiber reinforced plastics with cross section patterns consist of glass carbon or basalt these reinforced plastics can be used for pipeline or gas and sewage so basically uh, the, we have the rollers over here with the material they come down through some guiding plates they are put in a resin bath they are then heated into the specific shape then you pull it and then once it reaches the desired length you cut it i will link all these videos in the description uh, now these are examples of some aerospace composites i will also leave them in the description now uh, examples of specific composites this is concrete concrete you can see this is a uh, usual amount of concrete here this is this is concrete the mixing truck it's coming out of here we can see there is the support wires these wires uh, these will support the concrete even more to make it more uh, the mesh of steel it's usually steel uh, so this will make it support it and make it more durable uh, usually in skyscrapers bridges sidewalks highways house and dams uh, these are some properties good in compression strength can be molded into many shapes can be uh, uh, can be prefabricated that means can be made before and bought on site as i said in the mixing truck all these elements mix together to give the concrete uh, this is some structure water con cement uh, aggressive laminated veneer lumber lumber is basically wood so basically laminated wood uh, we can see the process over here. Uh, multiple layers of wood attached with adhesives typically increase the tensile strength and stiffness as well as the general durability, less likely to warp. Uh, over here, it is good in the compression strength. Over here, it's good in the tensile strength. Compression strength is when you push things together tensile strength is when you pull things apart so this is better in the tensile strength uh, for design context it's used in beams rim boards edge forming materials and headers next fiberglass fiberglass uh, over here it's an example of kayak made of fiberglass it is light it is stiff high tensile strength and compressive strength over here we saw only tensile strength over here we only saw compressive strength fiberglass has both tensile and compressive strength that's what makes it good uh, fiberglass reinforced fibers uh, in which the reinforcement fiber is in fact more glass in the form of fiber uh, this can be used for storage tanks house construction pipes watercraft uh, this is Kevlar. It is extremely strong and flexible. Low thermal conductivity. Uh, it has plastic fibers woven into coherent shapes. Coherent shapes is basically uh, plastic fibers woven into some shape. We can see some bonds between over here. We can see a lot of hexagons. So a lot of joining bonds. This is some example of... Uh, raw kevlar and this is example of kevlar in the military stuff this is what design context combat armor tires racing uh, and other ropes uh, combat armor people will uh, it's extremely strong so if somebody shoots a bullet it may be stopped but it's also flexible enough so the, those are the advantages of kevlar a uh, carbon reinforced plastics carbon fiber uh, basically has extreme strong it's extremely strong and light has direct 
additional strength usually for airplanes and sporting goods uh, as i said airplanes uh, fly high in the sky fly with uh, uh, passengers people so therefore they are the ones who right now are driving uh, strides in progressive uh, composite materials or as i said in the first slide advanced composite materials they are the ones who are driving the focus right now in advanced composite materials here an advanced comp composite materials these are usually for airplanes because they are as i said fly high fly for long also and they want these stuff it's lightweight cost effective scalable sustainable that's what we need so basically that's what composites is a mixture of two elements there are various ways you can do it and then after that we we'll discuss some examples over here and yeah guys that's all for uh, composite materials i shall meet you for another design video